Hello, Business 202. This Google Hangout walks through the example on activity-based costing in Chapter 25. The main thrust behind activity-based costing is that when overhead costs become a big part of the manufacturing process, like they are in today's manufacturing, it is very important that companies allocate that overhead in the most precise way. This is because foreign competition uh, is putting downward price pressure on items that are manufactured in the United States. Activity-based costing became popular in the late 1980s and the late or early 1990s when the US dollar became a very strong currency in the world because of the collapse of communism and the United States prominence as a world power. What a strong US dollar does is to make United States consumers able to buy foreign goods very cheaply and those strong US dollars result in a large number of foreign currency units to the seller of those foreign items. So uh, a low price in, in the US market results in a lot of foreign dollars from the foreign manufacturer. The result is price pressure goes down on the US maker and so the US maker has to be sure that the cost of the products that it makes are below the foreign prices that are being set. That is the main thrust behind activity-based costing, being very precise in, o in allocating the overhead in coming up with a cost per unit. Okay, with that introduction, here is the setup that you have in Chapter 25. We will be reviewing the Ruez company, which makes two products, a specialty snowmobile and a routine lawnmower that you and I have used to cut our lawns. The topic for activity-based costing is a familiar one. The activity-based costing is used to calculate the overhead predetermined rate, or PDR, that is used at the beginning of the period to allocate overhead to the final product during the period. The overhead PDR is calculated by estimating the total factory overhead costs at the beginning of the year. This is known as the cost pool and dividing it by the estimate of the volume of the activity base or cost driver during the year. Now for the Ruez company, the Ruez company has five different activities that are primarily responsible for driving overhead costs for the year. There's the fabrication department that uses machine hours as the activity base. There is the assembly department that uses the number of pieces assembled as the activity base. There is machine setup for the next production run and the number of setups represent the activity base for that activity quality control to make sure the product is being made to specifications would be the number of inspections. And finally, uh, the engineering change orders, uh, if, if something has to change in the manufacturing process or if there's a specialty add-on to the manufacturing, the number of change orders would be used as the cost driver. So uh, here's the deal with the snowmobiles and the riding mowers. Ruez company has planned 10,000 direct labor hours for the upcoming period. 8,000 of those direct labor hours will be attached to making snowmobiles and 2,000 direct labor hours will be attached to making the riding lawnmower. So that you can see the snowmobile will be the specialty item that consumes a lot of activity. The riding mower may be a high volume product, but it will not consume as much activity to make in the manufacturing process. In the assembly department, 
The snowmobile will use 2,000 direct labor hours. The riding lawnmower will consume 8,000 direct labor hours. For the number of setups, the snowmobile is more complex with 100 setups. The lawnmower only requires 20 setups. For the number of quality control inspections, snowmobiles uh, consume 100 inspections, whereas the lawnmowers, a fairly simple product to produce, requires only four inspections. For the engineering change orders, the ECHOs, the snowmobile might entail 12 change orders. Lawnmowers require only four. So the point is, snowmobiles require a lot of factory activity because of the precision and the quality control that's necessary to make these machines. Lawnmowers, on the other hand, are the standard routine basic item that can be manufactured very easily and therefore consume less activity. Now, why is this important? Well, those products that require a lot of activity consume most of the overhead. So what a company may be in danger of doing if it doesn't use activity-based costing in a precise manner is, here's the main point to this whole video, it might undercost the high-use specialty product and undercost, excuse me, overcost the standard routine product that it is making. What, what does that do in a competitive environment? The company might accept prices that would be too low for the specialty item itself out of the market for the routine standard item. Okay, so that's the setup for the uh, activity-based costing. Let's get into some of the details. We know that the PDR is what we're trying to estimate, and the estimate of the cost over the estimate of the cost drivers will give you the respective PDRs. So let's just do those. For fabrication, fabrication estimate of cost is 530,000, divided by the 10,000 direct labor hours, gives you $53 per direct labor hour as the cost per activity, in this case, direct labor hours, for the fabrication department. The assembly department has an estimated cost at the beginning of the year of $70,000 for overhead, divided by the 10,000 direct labor hours for assembly, which produces a $7 direct labor cost, excuse me, uh, overhead cost per direct labor hour. For setup, setup has an estimated cost of $480,000 for overhead. There are 120 setups, so the cost per setup is $4,000. Now remember, the snowmobile is requiring about 100 setups, where the lawnmower is requiring only 20 setups. For quality control inspection, $312,000 of overhead cost for quality control divided by 104 inspections for both products represents about $3,000 for each inspection. And for the engineering change orders, it costs $208,000. There are an estimate of 16 engineering changes during the year. So engineering changes are very expensive at $13,000 for engineering change order. Okay, now let's apply these PDRs or activity rates to costing the lawn mowers and the snowmobiles. What we would do is to take the PDR, the cost per activity, multiply it by the number of items in each activity to get the cost that we would want to allocate to the respective products. So let's do the snowmobiles first. Snowmobiles in fabricating will take 8,000 direct labor hours at a rate of $53 fabricating overhead per direct labor hour or a total cost of $424,000. For assembly, snowmobiles consume 2,000 direct labor hours at an overhead rate of $7 per direct labor hour. 
that results in $14,000 of overhead costs allocated to snowmobiles. For setups, 100 setups for the snowmobile times $4,000 per setup results in $400,000 being allocated to the snowmobiles. Here's a big difference. For inspections, the snowmobiles consume 100 inspections at $3,000 overhead per inspection or $300,000 being allocated to the snowmobiles. And another big difference is the engineering changes. The snowmobiles require 12 echoes at $13,000 an echo. That results in $156,000 of overhead being allocated to the snowmobiles. Adding the overhead allocation from each of these five departments results in total factory overhead being allocated to the snowmobiles of $1.294 million. For this uh, problem, 1,000 snowmobiles and 1,000 riding lawnmowers are being manufactured. So dividing the total allocated overhead of $1.294 million divided by the 1,000 units produced results in the factory overhead cost for each snowmobile to be $1,294. Okay, now, uh, doing the same thing for the riding lawnmower, uh, using the 2,000 hours at $53 to get the overhead cost allocated to the mower, 8,000 hours for assembly times $7 overhead cost per assembly results in $56,000 for the uh, assembly overhead allocation, 20 setups times 4,000 a setup results in 80,000 overhead costs to their lawn mowers for setups, four quality inspections times $3,000 per inspection results in $12,000 for the inspections for the lawn mower. Note the difference in the lawn mower inspection costs compared to the snowmobile and four engineering change orders times $13,000 per change order results in $52,000 of overhead costs going to the riding lawnmower. And again, note the difference in the total cost for overhead. Adding the five overhead allocations to the lawnmower from assembly, fabricating, setup, quality control, and engineering results in only $306,000 being allocated to the lawnmowers divided by the 1,000 units made results in only $306,000 per lawnmower. Now, on the face value, this looks very straightforward, and truly it is. The difficult part in implementing activity-based costing is the tracking of the detail, and that takes a lot of effort on a business's part. But here's the main point. Uh, Activity-based costing gives a more precise measure of the cost of manufacturing. And specifically for overhead, we said that the snowmobiles will receive one point or $1,294 per unit in overhead the lawnmowers will only receive $306. Well, let's contrast that to what would be the allocation if we just use the number of units as an allocation base. Total overhead for this company would be $1.294 million plus $306,000. That is $1.6 million. Go ahead and check me out with that calculation with a calculator. We have $1.6 million of overhead, and we have produced 1,000 snowmobiles plus 1,000 lawnmowers, 2,000 units. So 2,000 units divided into $1.6 million of overhead would produce $800 as the overhead allocated per unit. Okay, now let's contrast that. $800 on a per unit basis without activity costing 
and $1,294 with activity costing. So you can see the specialty, difficult manufacturing, high activity use product is undercosted without activity based costing processes. And so the company would be in danger of letting this specialty product be sold for too low of a price. That hurts profitability. On the other hand, using the per unit method to allocate overhead, $800 of overhead allocated for the lawnmower compared to the ABC cost allocation of $306, the standard routine high volume product would have been overcosted, and this particular manufacturer would have priced itself out of that particular market. Not a good thing. So the, you know, the company would be hurt in both cases. Putting this all together, uh, you have this exhibit 15, which shows the activities that are necessary to make each of these two products. Because the snowmobile is a specialty item, it should receive a higher allocation of the overhead than the standard routine lawnmower, which has very little activity and should only consume a small portion of the overhead. To review, the purpose of activity-based costing is to get a precise measure of the overhead per unit each unit would receive so that its pricing would be appropriate. A characteristic of manufacturing in today's highly automated manufacturing plans is that overhead with robotics and uh, machine operated tools creates a high proportion of overhead compared to materials and labor. So being very precise in allocating overhead is important when a business considers pricing its product. That's it for activity-based costing. Try practice exercise 25-9 and the rest of the exercises dealing with activity-based costing. And please do not hesitate to ask questions as needed. Thank you.